Hey everyone, professional photographer Ian Plant here, and if you want to make landscape photos that stand out from the crowd, then you need to learn to master the art of composition. And the composition is the visual design of the photograph. And composition can be a very complex topic, but in this video I am going to share five of my favorite techniques for making compelling visual designs. These are lessons drawn from my critically acclaimed ebook Visual Flow and my Ultimate Photography Composition course. And these are time-tested, proven techniques for making stunning landscape compositions. So if you want to learn more, then stay tuned. Okay, so my first tip for making effective landscape compositions is to find a good foreground. Now, you don't need a foreground for every landscape photo that you make, but you will find that generally, especially when you're doing near-far grand landscape compositions, adding a good foreground will add depth and a lot of visual interest to your final composition. The foreground provides an obvious point of reference for the viewer, and it can help to simplify what would otherwise be a chaotic scene. And since the foregrounds are the first thing that the viewer encounters when they're looking at your photo, you want to make sure that the foreground is interesting and that it relates to the rest of the scene. And above all, you need to resist the temptation to just put something in the foreground, even if it's not that interesting. I've certainly done that when I've been out in the field and I've been struggling to find a good foreground and I see some random rock or something like that. And I run over and I say, well, this is going to have to do. But if it's not an interesting foreground, if it doesn't relate or otherwise lead to the rest of the scene, then it's just not going to be effective. It's just going to be an ugly foreground and it's going to ruin your composition. Instead, take the time to find a foreground that actually works towards your goal of captivating the viewer. So, for example, with this photo taken in Torres del Pañe National Park in the Patagonia region of Chile, I searched around for an interesting foreground. I had this very calm reflection in the water, and I walked around until I found this really interesting piece of driftwood, and I used that as the foreground for my wide-angle composition. This adds visual interest, and I was very careful to choose a position where the driftwood was perfectly framed by the reflection of the mountains. And when you're making landscape photos, you can use literally anything as a foreground, as long as it has an interesting shape, as long as it leads the eye deeper into the composition, you can make just about anything work as a foreground. So for example, with this photo made on the Oregon coast, I used a bit of kelp, a bit of seaweed that had washed up on the shore. And normally when we think of seaweed, we don't really think of it as being something that's terribly interesting, but it worked really well as a foreground here because the seaweed was all coiled up and it created this really dynamic curving shape and that made the perfect foreground for this coastal scene. And with this photograph taken in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, I was exploring the forest and there was all this beautiful grass that was in the forest. And so I knew the grass was going to be a really colorful visual element, but I needed some sort of interesting foreground feature to serve as a visual anchor for my scene. So I explored the forest until I found this little plant growing out of the grass. Now, it's not a very big plant. It's not a very interesting plant, but it was bright enough and it had a really dynamic shape. So it stands out in the final composition, even though the plant is not a feature that would be particularly photogenic on its own, it makes a great foreground for this forest scene. And this photograph was taken in Badlands National Park in South Dakota. And this is a place that has a lot of colorful cracked mud and really interesting erosion patterns in this soft clay stone. So I spend a lot of time hunting for an erosion pattern that really stands out, that's got a great shape, like this really bold curving erosion pattern that I used as the foreground for this near far composition. My next tip is to look for leading elements that are going to draw the viewer deeper into the composition. And this is a really effective way at creating compositional power, using these leading elements to propel the viewer from foreground to background, from bottom to top in the composition, and to get them interested and engaged in your landscape photograph. 
Leading elements can be just about anything, including lines, curves, or a progression of visual elements which encourage the viewer's eye to travel deeper and deeper into the composition. Leading lines, which stretch from the foreground to the background, are especially powerful. Other shapes placed in the foreground can do the same thing, so a triangle can point the eye into the scene, or an S-curve can encourage the viewer to meander left and right as they go from foreground to background. So, for example, with this photo taken in Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada, I used these dramatic sandstone fins as leading lines going from my foreground to my background. And so that's creating these really dramatic lines that propel the viewer deeper into the scene. And for this photograph that I took in the rainforest of the Olympic Peninsula, I used some fallen tree trunks as my leading lines. Now this is an incredibly chaotic scene, but those three prominent trunks that stretch from the bottom of the composition into the central part of the composition, they are big and bold and strong. They help cut through the visual chaos and they provide the viewer with a very distinct path from foreground to background, from near to far, from bottom to top in this composition. And for this drone photo that I took above the Utah desert, I used the ridges that were below this butte in the background as leading lines. And the shape of the ridges is revealed by the sunrise side lighting that's gracing just the top of the ridges. That helps define those leading line shapes making those shapes more effective in the composition. And so the next tip is to find a way to highlight or otherwise emphasize your subject to direct the viewer's attention to the most important part of your composition. Framing is one effective tool for simplifying a composition and focusing interest on your subject. So examples of some commonly used frames include tree branches or natural arches. Another way to draw attention to your subject is through the use of light or color. So if you've got a little bit of spotlighting on your subject, that can make it really stand out. Or if you've got some color contrast in the scene, the contrasting colors can help the subject stand out from its background. So, for example, with this photo taken in an ice cave along the south shore of Lake Superior in winter, I was photographing deep within this cave and I was really close with a wide angle lens to a lot of these icicles that were coming down from the ceiling of the cave. And a hiker wandered into the scene and it was just perfect because he was wearing this bright orange jacket that really stands out from the blue surroundings. So not only did I frame that subject with all the icicles, but that color contrast really makes him stand out. It really emphasizes him as being the primary point of interest within this composition. And for this photo taken in Grand Teton National Park in winter, I used some tree branches that had some frost on them to frame Grand Teton Peak in the background. So when you're doing framing, you want to make sure that the frame isn't covering up or otherwise intersecting with your subject. You want to leave enough space around it so that your subject is isolated within the frame and that there's a visual separation between the subject and the framing material. And this photo taken in the Patagonia region of Chile uses a more subtle version of framing. And I actually combined this also with foreground. So I hiked around and explored the shoreline of this lake in the pre-dawn light, looking for an interesting bit of shoreline, something that had a really nice shape to use as my foreground. And when I found this particular stretch of shoreline, I knew I had the right shape, but I was very careful to select my position so that the shoreline perfectly framed the reflection of the mountains in the water. So I used the foreground to frame that very important part of the composition and to draw the viewer's attention to that place within the visual design. My next tip is to engage the viewer's interest by using a repetition of shape or color. People are naturally attracted to patterns, and that's part of our ability and our psychological need to organize our chaotic world. When the eye explores a pattern, it tends to want to visit each and every repeated element. So the smart photographer will use patterns of shape or color to get the viewer interested in multiple parts of the image to get them exploring each and every part of that pattern. So for example, I took this photograph that is a pattern of dead trees in the Namibian desert. 
And so each of these trees repeats that same basic tree shape and gets the viewer moving from left to right in the composition. And this is a drone photo that I took along the Atlantic coast of the United States. These are salt marshes. And I was fascinated by the patterns formed by the repeating shapes. So you can see that basic curving shape repeating over and over again, but also by the repeating colors. So the end result is a really visually energetic composition, something that gets the viewer's eye interested in multiple parts of the visual design. And so patterns can result from shapes, they can result from colors. You can also create patterns with the alternation of light and shadow. So for this photograph taken during a sandstorm in Death Valley National Park, there is a pattern created by the alternation between light and shadow on the dunes. This alternation creates a layering effect. So there's multiple layers in this composition going from near to far, going from bottom to top, that creates a visual progression that encourages the eye to move deeper into the scene. And my final tip is to look for ways to create visual energy in your compositions using visual opposition. So the other tips that are in this video can help you create visual energy, but I often look specifically for diverging visual elements. So I'm often looking for lines or shapes that tilt in different directions to create that visual energy. And one way to do that is to find two primary objects in your composition that you place in an opposing diagonal visual relationship. And so what I mean by this is, for example, you might put one visual element in the lower left and the other in the upper right of your composition. For example, with this photograph taken in Greenland, the iceberg is in the lower right and the mountain in the background is in the upper left. And so these two visual elements are diagonally opposed from one another, and that creates more compositional energy. And for this photo taken in the Badlands of South Dakota, I've got the curving shape of the rainbow in the upper left, and then the complementary shape, the curving shape of the white stripe in the claystone, that is in the lower right. So these two shapes repeat each other, but they're mirrored, so there's shape repetition here. But by placing them in a way that makes them diagonally opposed from one another, that makes the composition more energetic. And for this photo of methane bubbles that are trapped in ice in the Canadian Rockies, I love the way that each of these shapes of the bubbles in the ice points in a different diagonal direction. So one is angled one way, the next one is angled the opposite way, and so forth, going deeper into the scene. And then finally, you've got the slope of the mountain which points up towards the upper left, and then the cloud, which points to the upper right. So you've got this pattern of these interlocking shapes all at a different diagonal tilt, and that not only leads the eye deeper into the scene, but it creates considerable visual energy and gets the viewer's eye bouncing back and forth to multiple parts of the composition. And it's the same thing here for this drone photo taken in Iceland looking down on this braided glacial stream. All of the intricate braids create this really dynamic pattern. And what I love about it, what gives it so much visual energy, what creates such a sense of motion in this composition is the fact that each braid is coming in at a different diagonal angle. And that helped me create a visually intricate but still coherent composition that really gets the viewer's eye moving around. So in conclusion, always remember that when you take a snapshot, you're showing the world what your camera sees. But when you take the time to make a photographic composition, you are showing the world what you see as an artist. If you wanna learn more about the art of photographic composition, you can purchase my ebook Visual Flow, or you can become a pro member on Photomasters, which unlocks access to my Visual Flow ebook, as well as my Ultimate Photography Composition video course and all the other video courses and tutorials that are part of the pro membership. Well, I sincerely hope that you have found these compositional tips helpful. I'm Ian Plant, wishing you good luck and great light. Thanks for watching.